Isaac Basheva Singer, the great uh, Yiddish writer, who's no relation to me, um, said, uh, when it comes to the animals, all men are Nazis. Um, he referred to the way we treat animals as an eternal Treblinka. <laughs> things I've read and heard you discuss have to do with avoiding suffering. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't help but think, and I just want to explore this, I'm sure you've thought about it, although I haven't heard you talk about it, how the fact that your parents escaped the Holocaust has had an effect on your psyche regarding suffering. Yes, um, it's a good question, but it's a very difficult question for me to answer because, of course, from my point of view, I came to the views that I hold through reflection, through philosophical arguments and discussion. Uh, and although I was always well aware of the background of my family, um, and not only, as you mentioned, that my parents escaped the Holocaust, but that my grandparents did not. And Three of the four of them perished in uh, uh, the Holocaust. So clearly I was very aware of that. Um, uh, obviously I, I, I also read quite a lot about the Holocaust. Uh, you know, I, history was one of my favorite subjects, both at, at high school and at uh, university. Uh, and I did focus particularly on the history of Europe in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, so I knew a lot about what was going on I knew a lot about what uh, authoritarian fascist governments did to people. Uh, and obviously, I abhorred that, and no doubt I did identify it uh, with the victims, uh, as my grandparents, uh, and to some extent my parents, were victims. Um, but it's very hard for me to say, really, uh, whether that had a decisive role in, in the views that I now hold. I mean, I, I'm sure it informed it to the extent of, of an abhorrence of racism and an abhorrence of authoritarian rule uh, and the use of force in, in government. Um, did it lead to the more general views of uh, the idea that reducing suffering is one of our primary ethical obligations? Possibly, possibly it did. Um, but as I say, I can't, I can't trace that psychologically. I can't look back and think, you know, yes, I was conscious of that when I adopted this philosophical position. Uh-huh. And, and that suffering transfers to some identification with the animal kingdom, the non-human animal kingdom. Yes, that's right. Um, because I do think we see a, a related phenomenon. I, I don't equate the Holocaust with the way we treat animals. They're, they're not exactly the same. But I do think the same attitude of brutality towards those who are completely in our power uh, and the same indifference to their suffering that the Nazis exhibited to uh, Jews and uh, homosexuals and gypsies and others, the victims of the Holocaust, um, I think we see that in the way some humans, at least, uh, relate to non-human animals. You, know, you, you look at the, the videos that are taken undercover in uh, factory farms, uh, which show such totally unnecessary wanton brutality to animals being uh, uh, on by the employees of the of the farms, and, and they show them again and again. You know, and then the the conglomerate that owns the place says, "Oh, you know, this is terrible. We'll fire them. There's a lapse in training." Uh, but then it happens again and again, and so it, it's not just a lapse in training, there's something else going on. What are your thoughts about abortion? I'm uh, uh, in, in favor of allowing women to make the choice about abortion. Um, I don't think that the uh, embryo or fetus, at least up to the point at which it can feel pain, which is quite late in pregnancy, um, uh, is a being with the moral status that gives it a right to life. Um, so I think on that basis, the pregnant woman should be able to make that decision.
have uh, these new scientific discoveries, which are occurring all the time, cause you modification or changes in how you think about things? For instance, the CRISPR to change genetic outcome. Yeah. Well, a lot of my work is concerned with new developments, in particularly in the biomedical sciences. Yep. And uh, what are the ethical implications of them? Um, so there are new developments with uh, stem cells and uh, the hope that stem cells will lead us to cures for various diseases uh, and more recently advances in terms of genetic modification. Uh, we already had with, um, as a result of in vitro fertilization, we've had the possibility of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So we can look at the embryos in vitro and uh, see if there's a genetic flaw in one of them and not transplant that one, which is useful for couples who know that they carry some, some genetic defect. Uh, and uh, we will eventually be able to select, I think, for positive qualities as well. So that's certainly something that we as a society need to think about. What are your, are your thoughts about that? Well, um, I don't in principle oppose the idea that we could select for positive aspects of human nature. Um, but I'm troubled by the idea that uh, if this becomes something offered by private clinics, then wealthier people will be able to afford it and they will have the genetically superior children, whatever we mean by superior, of course, in that sense, um, and uh, the less well-off strata of society will not. And so what is now uh, an economic divide um, will become hardened into a kind of a genetic divide. And I, I think we should try to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm.